The 2023 NFL Draft was loaded with tight end talent, but the New England Patriots decided to hold off on drafting one of the top prospects and went the UDFA route with Johnny Lumpkin from Louisiana. Lumpkin is a hulking, wide inline tight end at 6'5", 265 pounds. Although he doesn't have an impressive stat line, his tape shows he is very raw, but the growth potential is scary. Lumpkin is not only tall, but he is incredibly long and has huge mitts. Moreover, his tape shows he can run some decent routes, and he is basically unaffected by linebackers and defensive backs trying to obstruct him. Most importantly, he has decent run and pass blocking skills that could be a big help for the Patriots offensive line. Keep in mind, New England does not have a solid blocking tight end on their roster. As a result, I think Lumpkin has a shot to make the roster if he can show he's capable of blocking at the next level and can be a viable threat in the red zone. I also think he can be a great candidate to possibly be converted into tackle if need be. Before we get into his potential, let's talk production. As I already mentioned, Lumpkin's production is not exactly impressive. Prior to his redshirt junior season, he only caught a few passes per season and missed the entire 2019 season due to an injury, which appears to have been a separated shoulder. However, in 2021, Lumpkin made 13 starts in 14 games, recorded 8 catches for 141 yards and a touchdown. His senior season saw a nice bump where he had 16 catches for 143 yards and 4 touchdowns. Indeed, these numbers are not stellar, but I went back and watched a couple of the games for each season, and the play calling didn't exactly favor Lumpkin in the tight ends. But he had more touchdowns than Laporta, Tucker Craft, Luke Schoonmaker, Luke Musgrave, Zach Koontz, and several other drafted tight ends this year. Again, I'm not saying Lumpkin is some unstoppable offensive weapon. I'm just pointing out that his numbers might not appear to be impressive, but they really aren't that bad. It is apparent his size and length are key to his performance. So let's take a look at his measurables. Lumpkin is 6'5", 265 pounds. His hands are 10 and a quarter. Arms, 35 and a quarter with a wingspan of 84 and a half. His 40 yard was 4.81 with a 20 yard split of 2.74 and his 10 yard was 1.61. The 20 yard shuttle was 4.53, 3 cone was 7.48. His vertical was 32, his broad was 10, and he benched 13 reps. This gave us a tight end RAS of around 6.62. A few things to point out here. One is Lumpkin's size. He is big, tall, and very long. Six foot five with 35 and a quarter inch arms and 10 inch hands. This guy screams tackle prospect if he doesn't pan out as a tight end. The glaring issues here are his speed and agility scores for a tight end position. Even though he is a big tight end, the shuttle and three cone times are not exactly encouraging. His 40 is slow, so he's not going to be elusive before and after the catch. The other big issue here is the 13 reps on bench. 13 reps on bench is no problem for a 200 pound corner. A 265 tight end should easily hit low to mid 20s here. I, now, I will say, he has two big issues that influence those numbers. One, he apparently had a dislocated shoulder a few years ago. That really impacts your ability to press, period. Not only to train for the 225 pounds for reps, but just in general. Pressing after a shoulder dislo is iffy at best. The other major issue is his arm length. Your best bench pressers in the world have T-Rex arms and a belly that distends about just as far as their bench. Having 35 inch plus arms is a hindrance for testing the 225 pound bench for reps. Now, that doesn't mean he's really weak in his upper body. I have had plenty of athletes who are weak in the bench, but could shoulder press or dumbbell chest press, hammer press, jerk, etc. With elite numbers. So, Lumpkin might be stronger than advertised here. Still, he will need to get his strength up to the NFL caliber. Looking at his shoulder development, it is clear that he needs to develop his shoulder girdle and put on some serious mass his upper back and shoulders to help absorb the impact of engaging blocks. In addition, his core is going to have to get to a whole new level of strength if he's going to control his body and the power of another player he's trying to control. 
In addition, he shows at least a few anthropometric imbalances for being so big. He tends to be sluggish out of his stance, which is not related to reaction time, but is more about struggling to bring his hips through to extend rather than just stand up. It could be technical, but it looks like Johnny might need to be chained to a squat rack for a few months and then convert that with some hang cleans. Plus, having some additional horsepower will help him develop into a yak receiver, where he can be a battling ram after the catch. The best part about all these issues, they are addressable. And if addressed, you got a unique athlete at the Y. Now, can he make the roster? Honestly, I think there's a decent probability he makes the roster this year, or possibly gets called up at least once. The reality is the Patriots offense is not a high-powered threat that's going to put up 40 a game and just overwhelm. The approach is more of, we are going to win by having more points when the fourth quarter ends. Yeah. I'm being a bit of a smart aleck, but I'm also very serious here. The Patriots can win games by turning possessions into more than just scoring drives. You can run the clock and cool the other team's offense, but with slow, methodical, numbing drives down the field. Well, you can't really employ this strategy with five wide, but having a big tight end can help contribute to the run game while also being a big threat on play action passes. Reminder. The Patriots do not have a tight end like Lumpkin on the roster. And the team will need tight ends come next season where all the current tight ends are up for contract. So, there is a need for him in the near future and the long term. The other reason they might get him on the roster is to keep him in New England. If Lumpkin is on the practice squad, he can be poached to another team's 53-man roster. That might seem unlikely to you, but there aren't many players like Lumpkin floating around out there and an injury to an inline tight end could make Lumpkin a valued player. So, the Patriots might want to find room on the 53. How could they use him? I think Lumpkin could bring a unique dynamic to the Patriots offense. Primarily, the potential to be a big end zone threat. Lumpkin running across the end zone is going to create havoc for a defense. Not only do you have a figure not only do you have to figure out who is going to cover that massive target, but you also have to deal with him being a flow disruptor, creating a wake behind him to be an opening for one of the receivers or backs to slide into for an open pass. Now, I think Lumpkin could allow the Patriots to open the book on 13 personnel packages, which could be very interesting and could be kryptonite for small defenses. The 13 personnel indicates that there are three tight ends in the game with one back and one receiver. With three tight ends on the field, it has to smell a lot like run to opposing defenses. However, you can execute some great RPOs from this grouping. Having three big tight ends will allow you to bully the defense around on runs. However, having three big hulking pass catchers in the secondary is a mismatch nightmare. Having Henry, Gesicki, and Lumpkin out for a pass is going to create an opportunity with the potential for no one to help over the top if the safeties bite. This is a great package to employ regardless if you are in the middle of the field or a few yards out from the end zone. You might think going three tight ends is crazy, but I've seen a few teams use it over the past few years outside the goal line situation. In fact, the teams that did use this roughly 8% to 10% of their offensive snaps. Yeah, I'm not suggesting the Patriots run 13 as a base, but they are going to need a variety of packages if they are going to find ways to get into the end zone. This is the level of creativity the Patriots are going to have to have to be able to win some. This is the level of creativity the Patriots are going to have to have to win some possession games. The take home on the take home on Lumpkin is that he is a rare combination of size and length at the tight end position. Although he is not fast. He can open up his gate and is capable of reaching dangerous speed with incredible momentum and space. Lumpkin's frame is going to allow him to block out defenders on stop routes underneath and really disrupt edge rushers trying to get a clean path to Mac. Moreover, he has decent technique and is respectable lateral movement for the backside cutoffs as a zone blocker and can even kick out edge or even climb and seal linebackers. Moreover, he has showed potential. Moreover, he has showed potential in pass protection if he stays home. Now, I'm going to say I was a big fan of Darnell Washington in this year's draft, 
but apparently he has had some knee issues that could still be a threat. So, he fell out of the first round and down to the third. I mention this because we didn't get Darnell Washington, but we might get his UDFA equivalent with Lumpkin. That is not the same threat, but is still athletic enough to contribute in the passing game. For me, Lumpkin is probably a better value than Darnell Washington now that I have watched his tape. This could be a massive steal for the Patriots and a big opportunity for Lumpkin, who was passed by the rest of the league. Before I conclude, I have to restate that Lumpkin still has a lot of work to do before the beginning of the season, and will have to continue to develop in the coming years. First, Lumpkin will need to enhance his core strength to handle blocking responsibilities at the NFL level. Yes, this will take precedent to skill development here. Why? I could show you how to absorb defenders and try to gain advantage on them with drills and tape all you want. If you can't generate the forces to absorb and manipulate an NFL defender, you're not going to have a chance even with advanced technique. It would be like trying to teach somebody how to dunk a basketball, but the player came and grabbed the rim. Luckily, blocking and live blocking drills will develop some strength. Still, Lumpkin is going to have to spend some time in the strength conditioning facility developing a powerhouse core and hip development. Now, we are not talking about crunches and planks. We are talking about lifts and movements that stress the body with external forces or resistance. So, front squats, back squats, searcher squats, overhead squats, various different deads, Olympic lifts, good mornings, hammer strength extensions, the list is extensive. Indeed, these are not typically listed as core exercises that you read about in men's health articles or you saw on a TikTok or whatever. These are core exercises because the athlete has to brace their core in order to perform these exercises correctly. And the external load. The weights or resistance is challenging the athlete to maintain their core integrity and ability to control the system, just like a defender. Yes. The athlete will do plenty of other core specific exercises, but these are not just abdominal exercises. Your core is more than your abdominal and oblique muscles. They're essentially everything from your rib cage to your knees. Abs, back, glutes, hip flexors, groin, etc. Training them independently doesn't create the movement patterns and often fails to transfer the training to the field. What is my point? This type of training is grueling and cannot be prescribed on a daily basis, it is going to take some time to develop the NFL level core development. Another thing, as I mentioned earlier, Lumpkin's 13 rep bench press performance is concerning if he's going to match up with NFL defenders. Yes, Lumpkin's reported shoulder injury and long arms did not help that performance. However, he needs to address this if he's going to try to lock horns in the trenches. In general, he's going to have to add some strength and mass to his upper body. Luckily, upper body work can be performed several times a week without overtaxing the CNS. Another characteristic he needs to work on is his aggression and play speed. Lumpkin tends to lumber by overstriding, by reaching with his feet rather than creating ground reactive forces to propel and create a clean backside mechanics to reload. This is common in tall and long athletes, but can be addressed with proper training and coaching. Without correction, he will fail to get separation even from linebackers. He is also quite sluggish coming out of his stance. Lumpkin settles into his stance and fails to create tensions in his feet, ankles, and hip complex to help explode out of his stance. He tends to stand up. Any competent defender is going to outplay him if he doesn't fix this ASAP. Luckily, this is something that can be coached up and should improve as he develops his strength. My point is... He has a lot of work to do, but it can be done with some success before the start of the season. Hopefully, his growth trajectory is encouraging enough for the staff to consider saving a spot for him on the team and turn him into a heavy-handed Y tight end and utilize him as an extended tackle. I wouldn't hate it even if he doesn't evolve into more than an occasional pass target sneaking out on play action throws. His physical traits give him a chance. Now it's up to him and the coaching staff to take advantage of those traits. So, what do you think about Johnny Lumpkin? Was he a good pickup by the Patriots? Will he make the 53-man roster? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.